Now these are some of the more gruesome details. When they wrapped him in the sheet, it was completely covered in blood, except for one white stripe. This has become a powerful symbol of Latvian bravery. And here it is, almost 800 years later. I don't know if it's just because it's fall and all of the leaves are changing, but we've been really impressed lately with the countries we visited and how much park space there is and how beautiful the parks are. I truly believe parks are one of the most important parts of a city. It's important to be able to go for a walk somewhere and not feel like you're just completely cramped. Cities can be high stress environments and I think here in Europe they make a real effort to make sure that the park space is plentiful and it looks very nice. This is the Freedom Monument here in Riga. It represents the Latvian independence that happened in 1920 after the First World War. This giant obelisk is topped with a statue victoriously holding three stars into the air. There are two military members that stand guard on either side of the monument. On the hour, every hour, they have a changing of the guard. Now Riga is very proud of the fact that they are the Art Nouveau capital of the world. But oddly enough, it was hard to get a lot of information on how to specifically identify an Art Nouveau building. A lot of times the only information we could find specific to identifying it is you'll know it when you see it. The individualistic elements on this building are a prime example on how to identify Art Nouveau. And there are hundreds of Art Nouveau buildings just in the old town itself. And now that we have a basic idea of what we're looking for, we're seeing a lot more pop up. I think we got really lucky in the fact that the first one we noticed is one of the coolest in the city. We're also starting to notice the arched doorways and the top of the windows are usually a triangle shape. So that's another way to identify them. Look at us, we're architecture experts now. These cobblestone streets of Old Town Riga are so amazing and they're filled with all these cool coffee shops. We've passed like three or four of them now that we've wanted to go into. That's about all we can handle. We're gonna have to actually go in one now. This one looks pretty cool, Estrada Coffee Bar. Well, we've already encountered a few buildings that have made us stop in our tracks. This one has to take the cake as the coolest one we've seen. This is the famous House of the Blackheads. It's one of the most well-known buildings, not just in Riga, but all of Latvia. Way back in the day, this was a merchant's guild. But today, it's a museum. Now, unfortunately, this building was completely destroyed during World War II, but they decided to rebuild it to its former glory. You can see the dates on the top. It says Anno 1334, so that's when it was originally built, and then renovated 1999. So this is the very modern version of what is a very historic building. There is so much significance to this building, centuries of history preserved within its walls. But my favorite little fact about the House of the Blackheads is they believe this is where the tradition of the Christmas tree started. There it is. It was originally a pagan tradition in Northern Europe to decorate balsam trees around the winter solstice. And that kind of evolved into what we know today as the Christmas tree. Griswold family Christmas tree. Isn't it a little big? And just to think, how many hundreds of millions of Christmas trees are decorated around wintertime every year? It all started right here in Latvia. This square is a perfect place to start a walking tour of Riga, one of the most historic buildings in the country right behind me. This way is the river walk along the Daugava River. It feeds in from the Gulf of Riga and goes all the way to Russia. And then as we walk this way, you have the Rigas Dome, another famous building here, with one of the best displays of the Latvian flag. It is all over the building. Now seeing the new flag everywhere is one of our favorite parts about spending the first few hours in a new country. I just love that so many of the countries in this region 
They're no bigger than some of the states back in the US, but they all have their own flag, their own language, sometimes even their own currency. It's just such a different cultural experience after you cross a border that can only take two or three hours of driving. Now, the reason I bring that up is because Latvia actually has one of the oldest flags in the entire world. So we've seen all these cool flags this year. This one might be one of the most historic. So the Latvian flag, the two dark red sides and then the white stripe in the middle, this actually originated during a battle all the way back in the 1200s. One of Latvia's military leaders was fatally wounded in battle, and they wrapped him in a sheet. Now these are some of the more gruesome details. When they wrapped him in the sheet, it was completely covered in blood, except for one white stripe where his back was laying down. So after he died, they actually used this sheet as a battle flag. They charged into another battle, and they won this battle. Ever since that moment, and ever since they charged into battle with that flag, this has become a powerful symbol of Latvian bravery. And here it is, almost 800 years later. It's so cool how it's such a deep shade of red, almost burgundy. And that deep shade of red definitely makes you think of that story with the blood in that battle. One of the quirks here in the city of Riga is that all of the church towers have a rooster on top of them. They're not exactly sure why this started, but one of the guesses is that all of the church towers, because of their height, they doubled as wind vanes. Everyone could know the direction of the wind on any given day. It's an important thing to know because this was a harbor city, a lot of boats coming in off of the river. So I had to know if you were with the wind or against it. And that's where the roosters come from apparently. But it's fun to look around and just spot all of the roosters because it's literally every church tower. Now as the capital of Latvia, Riga is Latvia's largest city. But Riga is also the largest city in the Baltic states. But the old town is very walkable. You can easily do the entire old town in a day. We found it very cool how the old town, it's very old world European. A lot of cathedrals, cool buildings, cobblestone streets. But then you get outside of the old town. This is actually a very modern city. A lot of young professionals live here. And it's definitely not a bad place to hang out for a few days. One more Latvian fact for you. The next time you wear your blue jeans, you need to thank Jacob Davis. In 1871, in Reno, Nevada, a native-born Latvian created denim. It didn't take long for Jacob Davis to become extremely wealthy, thanks to his longtime partner, Levi Strauss. 